right guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all-new 2023 Ford Bronco Outer Banks for the 2.7 EcoBoost. And a huge thanks to Zach and the rest of the management and staff here at Ford of Port Ritchie for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or truck in the Port Ritchie, Tampa, Clearwater area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Zach. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Bronco was Ford's first SUV, originally lasting five generations from 1966 to 1996. After a 25 year hiatus, the sixth generation Bronco that you see here was released back in 2021. Classified as a midsize SUV, the new Bronco shares a similar platform as the Ranger, while the smaller Bronco Sport shares a platform with the Maverick and Escape. For 2023, the Bronco and Bronco Sport have a new Heritage and Heritage Limited Editions featuring white rims, a white roof, and unique interior features depending on which Heritage trim you go with. For 2023, the Bronco is available as a two-door or a four-door. The base two-door starts at $34,095. The base four-door starts at $37,745. The standard power plant for the 2023 Bronco is a 2.3-liter turbo EcoBoost four-cylinder made into a 10-speed automatic transmission also available the seven speed manual. The 2.3 liter EcoBoost cranks out 300 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque. For 1900 bucks, you can upgrade to the 2.7 liter six cylinder EcoBoost, which is a twin turbo, made it to specifically only the 10 speed automatic transmission, cranking out basically the same horsepower at 330, but a lot more torque at 415. The zero to 60 of the 2.7 it's about a second quicker than that with a 2.3. There are 10 trim levels for the 2023 Bronco from the sub $38,000 four wheel drive base all the way up to the $76,000 Raptor. But here we have the outer banks with the base price a tick under 44,000 bucks. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, first thing we notice is the black aggressive Bronco grille with the white lettering. The race red paint color is very similar in my opinion to my Camaro's red hot. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. But other than that, typical Bronco styling. It's been around for about three years now. LED headlights, LED daytime running light, and an LED fog light standard for the outer banks. Front tow hook, solid airflow for this twin turbo V6. The hood, I like that aggressive bulge towards the windshield and those two notches in both corners help you direct this Bronco on the road, especially during off-road conditions. The wheel and tire setup, honestly, I'm not very impressed with the tires. They are all-terrain tires, but it's still an outer bank. So if you want the beefier, more aggressive all-terrain tires, you can option up to the higher, more off-road capable trims. But still, the rims, I like the black and silver contrast, the Bronco Pony in the center cap, six-piece lug pattern. The tires are Bridgestone Dueler all-terrains, dimensions being 25570 R18s. So the 70 series sidewall is very beefy. The 255s are relatively beefy for a street SUV, but for off-road conditions, I would like to see at least 275s, a more premium beefy, like a 33-inch off-road tire. But still, it's just an Outer Banks trim with a base price under 45,000 bucks. We get the Outer Banks badge in the corner. Running boards, mirrors are removable. We got the screws right up top. But the reason they don't attach the mirrors to the doors is because the doors are also removable. If you remove the doors during off-road conditions or just like on-road conditions, if you just want to remove the doors, you still want the mirrors to be there. So they're fixed to the windshield area as opposed to the door. The roof, we have the soft top here. I'm not gonna demonstrate how to remove it. It's a really complicated process, but I'm sure there's other videos and tutorials on YouTube that'll show you how to do it. This will be more of just a features and driving review. We get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Nothing out rear, but wouldn't really be expected. The same exact rear wheel and tire setup. Only difference is the smaller brake caliper. You can get a good look at the suspension setup. We don't get leaf springs. springs. You can take a look at the control arm differential shocks very solid ground clearance in this SUV. i'll leave a link right here to show you exactly the ground clearance that you get on the outer banks the gas cap is pushed open with easy fill i recommend premium fuel but it says 87 plus should be okay out rear we have full led taillights full rear parking sensing ford badge button to open up your tailgate we don't have the opening glass for the tailgate since we don't have the hard top but if you want the opening glass of course you can go for the hard top. They're a little bit delayed for production, but I'm sure eventually they'll all come in. Full size spare tire, we'll take a step back, get a good look at the exhaust tip, rear differential. But speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this 2.7 liter EcoBoost and hear how she sounds.
All right, guys, that was the sound of the 2.7 liter twin turbo EcoBoost sold by Ford for the 2023 Bronco Outer Banks. It sounds okay for what it is. It makes a very healthy amount of power at 330 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this mid-size 4x4 SUV weighing in well over 4,000 pounds, about 4,500 pounds to 60 in the mid-six second range, which is very respectable of an acceleration time. But what you see is basically what we get, no hydraulic struts, I'm using my arm as the prop right, right now. We can shut this hood right down, take one more step back, get a good look at the front styling. Before we check out the interior in this Bronco Outer Banks, let's take a quick look at this window sticker, see all the standard features and all the optional features in this specific Outer Banks Bronco. So 2023 Bronco 4x4 with the 2.7 EcoBoost 10 speed transmission, race red, exterior, cloth rose black seats for the interior. Standard features, you guys can pause, take a look at all of these. Hopefully I can focus the camera for you guys. There you go. Options, starting with $1,895 2.7 liter EcoBoost with a 32 inch all-terrain tires, $50 credit for the navigation removal and $250 credit for the six speaker sound system. I heard Ford is offering a $3,500 rebate for anybody that goes for a 2023 Bronco and chooses to option out the navigation and the good sound system. So I guess that's an incentive to go with the Bronco. Either way, the base price is very competitive at $44,440 after all these options and credits and destination and delivery charge we're still sitting a tick under 48,000 bucks. Fuel economy, we're averaging over 20 MPGs, 19 city, 21 on the highway. Not the best highway MPGs, but 19 in the city. I'm sure no one's gonna complain with the Bronco. Taking a step inside, again, we got smart access for the driver and a front passenger. The mirrors we didn't mention have blind spot monitoring and the glass fills up just about the entire frame. Taking a step inside, we get marine grade vinyl up top. I'm liking this brown baseball glove colored material. The rest of the door panel is hard plastic, but to be expected because the door is removable. The armrest is gushy, soft, still that marine grade material. It's not leather. Faux aluminum door handle, cargo net, lock and unlock and an aluminum door handle. The window controls are not on the door because again, the door is removable. You don't want to run too many electronics from the door to the fuse box. The seats are a similar color to the armrest. It's this brown cloth material with black contrast with blue contrast stitching. Fully adjustable, they're not power seats, but you can still recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats all with latches. The seats themselves are comfortable, solid bolstering, and they're heated seats. Taking a step inside, we get a running board again and a little grab handle that says Bronco on it, all outlined in blue. Grabbing out to the grab handle, stepping on the running board makes it pretty easy to step inside the door. Decently satisfying thunk for a vehicle with a soft top roof. Foot on the brake, engine start stop, everything fires right to life. But first thing we notice is the steering wheel. It's a very sporty steering wheel, decently thick, solid 10 and 2 bolstering notch, and 9 and 3 feels good in your hands. I'm liking the leather materials too. Bronco pony in the center. The horn area is a rubberized plastic. The horn itself, really aggressive sounding horn. People should definitely be getting out of your way. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have our cruise control settings, lane keep assist, and volume controls. On the right side, you can hang up and answer your phone calls, skip your songs, voice commands, and adjust your infotainment. Speaking of infotainment, you press this button to the side and we can see between our off-road, trip and fuel, my view, and phone settings, audio too. Beneath audio, we have just our overall settings that we can adjust. Off-road settings, let's take a look and see what we get. Battery voltage, transmission and temperature, and oil temperature. Off-road status, pitch and roll, tire pressure, gauges, and turbo boost. You press this button and just alternate between all of those screens. Off-road, pitch and roll, tire pressure, gauges, you get a turbo gauge, oil pressure, oil temperature, transmission temperature, and a voltometer. Underneath that, turbo boost gauge, oil temperature, transmission temperature, and the battery voltage, all in separate screens. My personal favorite to look at at all times, not the off-road. If I was off-roading, it would be off-road. But personally, I'd probably rather look at all the gauges at all times. Maybe just the boost gauge, but we still get a boost gauge here. To the left of that, we have a digital speedometer, analog speedometer to the left of that going up to 120 miles an hour with the RPM tack in the center. Beneath that, we can see what gear we're currently in, coolant temperature in the bottom left. That's about it for this digital gauge display. It does look very high quality for a sub $50,000 off-road capable SUV. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our auto headlamps, fog lights, interior brightness, electronic parking brake, and hood latch release. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel. We don't get auto rain sensing wipers on this trim, but the intermittent stock is right here in the center. The dashboard is all hard plastic up top. Not a big deal. At least they gave us the soft materials for where your arm will often rest. The air vents have this blue outline material for the adjustments to it. Hopefully you guys can pick it up on camera. Up top, you can press this button. This is our trail turn assist. It's available either in four-wheel drive low or four-wheel drive high. Traction control you can turn off. 
hazards. Beneath that, we have our eight inch touchscreen. No navigation, should have been available, but given all the chip shortages, they just wanted to get these Broncos out here. So we ended up not getting the navigation. We still get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that basically can mirror your phone to your screen. So assuming that you have data, you basically still do have navigation. But anyway, we have audio, phone, apps. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, as we mentioned, overall settings and features. We have driver assistance, towing, and the owner's manual, all available through the screen. My personal favorite to look at at all times would just be audio and see what song is currently playing. We don't have a song currently playing because for copyright purposes. Anyway, though, beneath that, we have our volume and tune adjustments, auto start, stop, you can disable, pause, skip controls. Beneath that, dual zone, automatic climate control with heated front seats. Beneath that, we don't get a wireless charging pad standard on this trim, but we still get USB-A and USB-C port. A little decal, it doesn't show us our serial number, but it says Ford, designed and engineered in Dearborn, Michigan, United States at Michigan Assembly Plant. Behind that, I'm liking how they didn't give us any piano black. It's all this carbonized flash plastic material. The gear selector has a Bronco on it. It controls the 10 speed automatic transmission, manual shift controls on the gear selector. Backup camera, we take a quick look. Very good resolution. We get rear parking sensors, guidance lines, and trajectory. Solid, throw it right back in the park, and it returns us to the home screen. Goat mode, we have six goat modes on the base, or not base the non off-road oriented Broncos. This is technically not an off-road oriented Broncos. So we only have six goat modes, but should be more than enough. We got normal mode, eco mode, sport mode, which we'll check out in this review, slippery, mud ruts, and sand mode. We're not gonna check out any of those modes and sand mode immediately puts us back into four wheel drive. We're not gonna do a whole lot of four wheel drive driving in this vehicle, maybe an acceleration off the line, but that's about it. Behind that, we have two cup holders. You'll fit 20, maybe 24 ounce cups in there. If you wanna take a look at your Bronco key, I'll let you guys take a look. We get remote start and it says Bronco on the back of it, not your typical Ford key. The window controls are auto one touch for all four. You can lock them up back here, adjustable mirrors to the right of it. The center console is pretty soft marine grade vinyl. You can open it up, see the space. Pretty spacious little cubby here. You're not gonna fit a phone, but you'll fit a ton of coins, business cards, whole bunch of car accessories. And the console itself, you'll probably fit four, maybe five two liter bottles of soda and an additional 12 volt. Good spot for a radar tech there. We can put this cubby back, shut this console up. The glove box, we can drop this latch, it's damped. Decently large, it's not the widest, but oh, wow, that glare is brutal. I apologize for the sun, guys, there you go. But yeah, hopefully you get a good idea of that glove box. You'll fit about 20, 25 license plates in there with no problem. It says Bronco right above it. Up top, we have a sunglass holder. Cool. Interior lights are LED. Visors are illuminated. Great. We don't get a moonroof, of course, because the soft top convertible to open up the soft top. You pull these latches down and basically start the process. It'll take you about probably four or five minutes. I'm not going to show you guys, but I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube where you can get a good idea. That's about it for the front seat, guys. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials. Up top, we still get the marine grade vinyl up top with the gushy soft marine grade vinyl for the armrest, faux aluminum grab handle, and an additional cargo net. Running board continues, no nameplate as we step inside. The rear seats are still cloth, of course. No bolstering at all, but we'll see the comfort in one second. Blue contrast stitching. Let's lift up this headrest and take a step inside. Foot on the running board, hand on the grab handle. It's nice they gave us that for the back seat. And I'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have at least three inches of knee room, plenty of room for my feet. Headroom, I got at least five, six inches. I'm not even close to touching my head. So if you're under six foot six, six foot seven, you'll sit behind your own seat settings in the Bronco pretty comfortably. It's still considered a midsize SUV. Map box on both of the front seats. One thing I'm not liking, no air vents. We do get air vents underneath the front seats, but I would like to get an air vent that blew directly into my face for a vehicle that's approaching 50,000 bucks. The rear window controls are right here for the center console. AC adapter, that's nice, USB-A and USB-C port. No center cubby here. An additional LED light right above with two speakers in the trunk. That's about it for the back seat, guys. We can take a step out of here, check out the cargo space, and then take this 2023 Bronco Outer Banks out for a drive. So you see, you just press that button and the trunk opens up hydraulically. The top also opens up, I believe, but you gotta pull these latches on both sides. Up, up, there you go. And now you can, you should be able to lift the top, but it's really not practical. If you wanna be able to actually open up the top glass, like for pets or whatnot, you're gonna probably want to option up for the hard top. But cargo space, hopefully you guys can pick it up. We have a speaker for the trunk, secret storage for the fix-it-flat kit, 
jack and a little bit of stuff for some crap car accessories or some secret stuff behind it. You fold those rear seats down 60-40 split. I'd expect you to fit probably a 65-70 inch V back here. Maybe larger because it's very wide. It's just not very long of a floor. We can shut this thing right up. It's a very cool process it's just for cities when you got a parallel park i can't imagine it being very practical to be able to open up your trunk especially when there's a car directly behind you but this isn't a city you wouldn't be buying an off-road vehicle probably if you live in the city maybe a g-wagon but outside of g-wagons you don't really see many off-road vehicles in the cities but again that's about it for the inside and outside of the 2023 bronco outer banks let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got all right guys now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 bronco Outer banks, let's take it out for a drive. So first thing I'm gonna do is make sure we're in normal mode. That's where we're gonna start off at. And the throttle still feels sensitive. The steering has a great weight to it. My first impressions. Very commanding view of the rope. We don't sit super high up. We just reviewed a Raptor on this channel and you don't sit anywhere close to that high up. Big bumps coming up. Rides over them very well. I mean, it is an off-road SUV your nice little turbo whistle as you start leaning into it. We'll really lean into it once again to this road. Looks like we're good. Take a step out. Ooh. Yep, picks up speed really well. But as you hear, plenty of wind noise with the soft top, plenty throwing it in probably a lot faster than we should. Steering gets a lot lighter at high speeds. Not as confidence inspiring, but the handling is good. Miles ahead of the Wrangler in terms of handling, but dear Lord, is there a lot of wind noise. We'll see how the composure is over the speed bump. Boom, wow, the ride quality of the speed bumps are fantastic. The Broncos handle the big bumps absurdly well. The little bumps you still feel, but the big bumps you really don't. Check out the turning radius too. That's another reason you buy the Bronco. The turning radius is just absolutely absurdly tight. This is the four door. The two door will even be several degrees tighter than that. All right guys, we'll try it out in four wheel drive. Let this car pass, throw it into sport mode. Take a step right here. Coming to a complete stop. We're not gonna brake torque it or anything, but complete stop off the line on the gas. Ooh. Yeah. Brakes, you gotta lean into it a little bit, but the handling is surprisingly good. Good torque. Very solid. And that wasn't even in four wheel drive, apparently. That was all two wheel drive, just like the F-150s. As soon as you put it into sport mode, it takes you out of the four-wheel drive, but it didn't seem like you really needed four-wheel drive. I didn't feel any wheel spin. It felt very solid and planted. Good torque. Hopefully you pick up that turbo whistle on camera. All right, guys, taking a step out onto this multiple lane highway. Get situated and lean into it. Ooh! Nice. Overall, guys, this is a sweet off-road capable SUV, especially for the money. I actually genuinely believe you're getting your money's worth with a sub $50,000 SUV. Once you go higher up in the Bronco spec level where you start crossing like the Black Diamonds, uh, the Heritage Limited, that's like 66,000. The Raptor, it's like 76,000. That's where I may con consider calling it a little bit overpriced, but not this. This Outer Banks, the $44,000 base price, you have really all the options and features you could possibly want or need. Plenty of power, off-road capability, and a ton of space where you can put full-size adults in this vehicle. This is truly a good value mid-size SUV considering the performance, considering the capability, and especially considering the features. If you're looking for a 4x4 off-road capable SUV, you need the space. You don't want it to handle like a boat, aka Jeep Wrangler. You want tight handling want good performance and acceleration, definitely check out the Bronco. Would I necessarily recommend the 2.7 liter engine? If you're going automatic, if you have to go automatic, yes, of course, check out the 2.7 liter engine. It makes more power and it's less than a $2,000 option. Another thing that I would consider, check out the hard top. The soft top is cool. It's easier to remove. It's a little bit lighter to remove, but we're only going 45 miles per hour, 47 miles per hour right now. And just about all you hear is the wind noise 
because of the soft top. That's probably my only complaint with this SUV. Love the price, love the performance. Would I get the 2.7? Probably not. I would probably go 2.3 because I love the manual transmission for the Bronco. I would want the manual transmission. It sucks that Ford doesn't let you get the manual with 2.7. If they did, yes, no brainer. But since they don't, I would probably go 2.3. If you don't want the manual, definitely check out the 2.7. All right, guys, we can try out a real world turning radius right here. I think it's gonna be sharp because this is a Bronco off-road capable vehicle on the gas. Oh! Really good performance, guys. Overall, if you're looking for an off-road capable SUV, you want it to handle well. You don't like the way that the Wranglers handle. You prefer the tight feel of the Bronco. I would definitely recommend checking it out. And as far as the Outer Banks trim level, this is probably a great value to go with. Sub 50,000 bucks, sub 45,000 bucks if you go with the 2.3. And I'd probably recommend going with the 2.3. Yes, the 2.7 makes way more power. But if you're buying this vehicle for the fun, I'd recommend going for the 2.3 simply because you can get it with the manual. If you don't have any intentions of driving a manual, definitely check out the 2.7. It's still a great value. The only thing I don't particularly like is the soft top because at 42 miles per hour, I should not be hearing this much road noise but still if you're looking for a spacious suv you want it to be off-road capable you want the performance to be there and you want it to look really cool and rugged this is probably the best way to go and this trim level the outer banks starting under forty-five thousand bucks were probably the way that i would recommend checking it out and a big thanks to zach at ford of poor richie for helping make this review possible i'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car suv or truck in the port richie tampa clearwater area i would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for zach and huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.